centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. I would like you to consider uniform circular motion, just to keep things simple. Okay. So imagine a car or a stone moving in a circle. Okay. Let's say that's the circle it's moving in, and this is the center of the circle. So let's consider the particle here. It goes round with a constant speed. We call that speed v. Let's say. Okay. Um, however its velocity changes direction, okay? While the magnitude of the velocity is this v, so let's put it like this, the direction of the velocity does change. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with time, okay? So if there is an acceleration, we know from Newton's laws that there must be a force acting because the first law, Newton's first law, states that a body would continue in its state of rest or uniform motion if no external force is acting on it. So this body here, it's moving like this with a certain velocity v, let's call that v initial. It should continue moving in a straight line upwards provided no external force is acting on it. So the fact that it moves in the circle at all suggests to you that there must be some kind of force acting to keep it in the circle, to move it away from the straight line that it would have gone on. Okay. That force we call the centripetal force. Okay? And we'd see that centri means center seeking. So centripetal force is always towards the center. But we're going to see in a minute how that comes about. Okay? So if you consider the particle, the stone here at another time, and it has moved a certain angle, certain number of radians, let's say certain angle theta. Okay, that's r, the radius of the circle, so this is r2. And here it has a velocity in this direction, okay? Let's call that vf, okay? Both vi and vf have the same magnitude, which is v, okay? But they have a different direction. This has a completely different direction, okay? So what we're looking for is the rate of change of velocity, that would be the acceleration, AC, centripetal acceleration, which is a vector quantity, is given by change in velocity over time. Okay, rate of change of velocity of time, which is V final minus V initial. A do a vector subtraction using these vectors. And I'm going to do it right here. Let's say we start with our vector VF. So we just copy it exactly over there, the same length and the same direction. And we need to now subtract out vi. So I'm going to draw exactly the opposite. vi was going upwards. vi is now going downwards since it's a negative vi. And this here then is the resultant of this subtraction, which is delta v. Okay. You can see that that direction would be radial if you drew it here. Okay. So if you drew it here, this would be vi, negative vi. And that would be delta v along there. Yeah? Okay, so I'm just going to remove it from here for the sake of clarity. So I just did that to show you the direction. Okay. So what we have now is we have seen that the direction of the change in velocity is pointing towards the center, which is what we... Um, hoped for when we said that it's centripetal force, okay, so the force is in the same direction as the acceleration, okay, pulling it in towards the center at every point. Therefore, imagine this particle going straight and something is pulling it, tugging it towards the center, it keeps falling in towards the center and goes round in this circle, okay. Now, let's say that the distance covered from this initial point to the final point is some distance s along the arc. So s, when theta is small, is the same as r theta from geometry, okay? And let's call that equation 2. Let's call this equation 1, okay? So we're now searching for an expression for delta v. If we can find delta v in terms of quantities that we know, we will then have a, a way of calculating the centripetal acceleration, okay? If you consider this triangle here, and I'm going to replace this arc here, 
by a straight line, since theta is small, um, then you see that we have two equal sides, which are both r and an included angle theta. And here we have two e equal sides, which are both v, okay, because vf and vi are both v in magnitude, and the included, same included angle theta, okay. That means these two are similar triangles, okay. So for similar triangles, what we have is that the, the ratio of their sides is equal. So if we take the ratio of, say, S, this side here, opposite theta, to R, we must take the side opposite theta, which is delta V, and its ratio to V, the magnitude, okay? So I'm going to rewrite delta V equals S V over R, okay? And I'm going to include this, substitute for this in equation one. So I have AC equals delta V over delta T, and delta V is this, so I'll write this S V over R delta T, okay? I'm going to just rearrange that in this fashion, okay? So what is S over delta T? It's nothing but the velocity again, it's the distance over time, okay, which gives us v squared over r, and that's your formula for centripetal acceleration. AC is v squared over r, okay, there you have it. Can you see this? Okay. So force equals mass into acceleration. If you talk about centripetal force, you talk about centripetal acceleration. So centripetal force is mass times V squared over R. And that would be the formula for that. You can also express this in terms of angular acceleration. We know that V equals R omega, okay? From, therefore, FC equals M r squared omega squared divided by r which is m r omega squared okay just another way of writing the centripetal formula and there you go thank you and i hope you understood centripetal acceleration